Throughout history, plenty of important discoveries were made by accident. Sometimes we just find things in places that we least expect, from a disappearing bunker in the woods to a fishing boat in the desert. Here are 20 most incredible discoveries found in the middle of nowhere. Number 20. Abandoned Lifeboat on Bouvet Island Did you know that over a thousand miles from Antarctica sits a tiny island that is largely unknown and completely uninhabited? It's very different from the lush and tropical islands often shown in the movies. 90% of Bouvet Island is covered in glaciers, and its sides are steep, icy cliffs. Experts believe arriving on the island by boat is extremely difficult, even under the best conditions. Under average conditions, doing so is said to be impossible. Because of this, modern expeditions onto the island are made using a helicopter. That's why in the 1964 expedition to Bouvet Island, Lieutenant Commander Alan Crawford and his team were shocked to find an abandoned lifeboat on the lagoon. What was it doing on this remote island? Who was on the boat? And what happened to them? There were no markings on the lifeboat that could help the team identify its origins. They also found no evidence of people living or dying on the island. The presence of the lifeboat was a huge mystery for several decades. Well, it turns out that the lifeboat was left there by a group of Soviet researchers who landed on Bouvet Island in 1958. Due to worsening weather conditions, they couldn't leave the island using the lifeboat, so they had to stay there until they were rescued. After three days, a helicopter arrived and escorted them off the island. I'm glad all of them got out of there safely. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Cursed Staircases That Appear in the Woods On the internet, people have been sharing stories about ghostly staircases suddenly appearing in the middle of the woods. The staircases hikers or rangers have seen weren't connected to any structure or seemingly led nowhere. This phenomenon has been reported in different parts of the world, often occurring in forests or national parks. According to a legend, two students once saw an isolated set of stairs in the middle of the forest. Out of curiosity, they climbed the stairs. But the moment they reached the top, they heard a blood-chilling scream. They immediately descended and ran out of there. An even more bizarre story tells of a ranger who stumbled upon two mysterious staircases in the jungle. He was then asked to search for missing people who might have ventured into that area. He went up the stairs, hoping to get a better view of the place and then climbed back down to continue his search. After a few hours, he still didn't find anyone, so he decided to return to the ranger station. That was when he realized something was terribly wrong. The people at the station said that he had been fired from the job because he hadn't shown up to work for the past five years. He couldn't believe it. He was only in the jungle for what felt like a few hours, but it turned out he had been missing for five whole years. If you ever found a mysterious staircase, would you dare to climb it to see what happens? Number 18. Top Secret Bunker Two cousins from Southern California went hiking in a nearby area called Oak Glen. There was no trail for them to follow, so they just moved forward, climbed a steep hill, and eventually reached its peak. Soon, they realized that they were so deep in the woods that they didn't know their way back to the car. What's worse was that the whole place was starting to get really foggy and they only had a few minutes left before it got dark. They slid down the steep hill on their butts to save time and walked in a direction they hoped would lead to their car. Instead, it led them to a mysterious discovery. The fog at that time was already very thick, but they could still make out an outline of a boat. When they got closer, they realized that it was some sort of bunker with thick concrete walls, a heavy steel door, and barred windows. They decided to move along, having an eerie feeling about the whole thing. Thankfully, after they passed by the mysterious bunker, they found a foot trail that led back to the main road. A few weeks later, when it was full daylight, they decided to return to the place and search for the bunker. They never found it again, even after hiking for several hours. Could there be something supernatural happening in that area? Was the bunker part of a top-secret facility that had the ability to become invisible? What do you think? Number 17. Real-Life Castle Dracula in Scotland If you love reading horror stories, you must have heard one of the most well-known classics, Dracula, written by the Irish author Abraham Stoker. One of the most important pieces described in the novel is the Castle Dracula, the Transylvanian residence of the vampire antagonist. 
Did you know that an actual castle near Cruden Bay in Scotland might have been Stoker's visual inspiration for Castle Dracula? Between 1893 and 1910, the author frequently visited Cruden Bay during month-long holidays. When Stoker started writing Dracula, he had stayed at a hotel in the village, and this hotel was located near New Slane's castle. Stroker likely drew inspiration from this majestic structure. For instance, Stroker wrote about a particular octagonal room in Castle Dracula, and his description matched the actual octagonal hall in the New Slane's castle. The real-life castle used to be a sight to behold. It had marble steps, 14 bedrooms, 7 main reception rooms, a walled garden, stables, and tennis and croquet lawns. What a fantastic place to live! However, the grandeur of New Slane's castle is long faded. Only the ruins remain in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. But I must say that the view still looks wonderful. Situated near the edge of a cliff, the old castle overlooks the beautiful ocean, and behind it is a large expanse of land. It's not difficult to imagine how Abraham Stoker could have been inspired by this castle when he was writing Dracula. Number 16. Grand Castle in the Desert A place called Death Valley isn't usually a place people would want to build their homes. And rightly so, because it's actually a colossal desert far from civilization. There, you'd expect to find acres of barren sand, some mountains, and maybe an occasional oasis or two. But something incredible can be found in the middle of the hot and arid landscape, a huge Spanish-style mansion called Scotty's Castle. There was once a man named Walter Perry Scott who went around claiming that he had found a secret gold mine in Death Valley. He approached several potential investors and tried to convince them to support his current operations. The thing was, there was no secret gold mine, and he never intended to look for one in the first place. While his charisma and enthusiasm initially convinced business people to invest in his alleged gold mine, most of them backed out after seeing through his cunning schemes. Only one investor remained, Albert M. Johnson. After putting thousands of dollars into Scotty's operations, Albert finally visited Death Valley and learned that the gold mine never existed. Unexpectedly, the two remained friends and Albert and his wife even returned to Death Valley several times to enjoy the dry desert air. Soon, the couple decided to construct a castle in Death Valley at the bottom of Grapevine Canyon so that they would have a comfortable place to stay during their visits. They even allocated a space for Scotty to live in. The castle's incredible architecture and intricate furnishings are awe-inspiring. It's hard to believe that something like this can be found in the middle of the desert. Number 15. Impossible Rocks Found on a Remote African Island Geologists were baffled when they found several samples of an impossible rock on the remote African island of Anjouan. Anjouan is an island that was created due to a massive volcanic eruption that occurred around 4 million years ago. When geologists surveyed the land over a century ago, they expected to find uniform soil composition consisting of volcanic basalt, a dark-colored rock derived from lava. Instead, they found several samples of a lighter-colored sedimentary rock identified as quartzite. They even found an entire region that was almost white due to the abundance of the rock. This mineral does not come out of volcanoes. So how did it get there? Studies surrounding the existence of quartzite on Anjouan are still ongoing, but researchers have an initial hypothesis. It could be that around 165 to 130 million years ago, when the supercontinent Gondwana broke up, a chunk of quartzite drifted to the ocean basin between mainland Africa and Madagascar. Then, when the historic volcanic eruption occurred, the basalt intertwined with a continental piece that had already been there millions of years prior. To confirm this theory, researchers plan to date the quartzite and determine how much can be found on the island. Number 14. The Little Dragon of Queensland Many animals rely on camouflage to successfully hide from their predators or to hunt their prey effectively. They have adapted to develop coats or skins that have colors or patterns that resemble their habitat. From afar, this gecko would definitely be hard to spot, at least from a human perspective. Its color and patterns easily allow it to blend in with the appearance of the ground or bushes. It even has a tail that looks identical to a leaf. This gecko is actually a recently discovered species found on Scoffell, an uninhabited island 50 kilometers off the coast of a city in Queensland, Australia. Associate Professor Conrad Hoskin discovered it during his four-day survey of the island. 
In an interview, he described his newfound creature as something that looked like a little dragon because of its big beaky face. It's not surprising that this new species was only recently discovered. Aside from the fact that the leaf-tailed geckos live on a remote island, they also occupy an area of less than one square kilometer, specifically the wettest and rockiest part of the rainforest. According to Hoskin, the leaf-tailed gecko may be the last new species of vertebrates to be discovered in Australia. This was really an exciting discovery for the ecologists in the country. Number 13. A Rare Albino Porcupine Emerise Halleck was driving down the highway in Alberta, Canada when she spotted something unusual on the side of the road. For her, it seemed like an odd-looking white rock in the bushes. But she didn't think much of it, so she drove on. However, her brother, who was riding with her, insisted that they turn around. He was convinced that the white object was an albino porcupine. Well, if I saw something like that on the side of the road, I would also want to turn around to get a better look. Anyway, Emerise drove back to the spot where the white figure was, and she realized that he was right. It was an albino porcupine. They got out of their car and walked closer to the unique creature. They took photos and admired its cute appearance. The porcupine was very casual about the whole scenario and continued going about its business in the bushes. Because of its bright appearance, this porcupine can be disadvantaged in the wild. Despite this, the creature looks plump and healthy, so it seems to be getting by. Porcupines usually have black or brown fur, whiskers, and quills. They may have streaks of white, and they don't get as white as this guy. Albino porcupines are quite rare, so this was definitely a remarkable find. The condition is known to occur in only 1 out of 10,000 porcupines. Have you ever seen animals while driving on a highway? What was the weirdest creature you've spotted during a road trip? Number 12. St. Kilda Ghost Town St. Kilda is an archipelago that is considered to be the most distant part of the British Isles. It's so remote that it's not even shown on some maps of Britain or the world. Despite being relatively isolated, St. Kilda's main island, Herda, was actually once inhabited. By the 17th century, the island has a total population of 180. The villagers lived in stone homes known as black houses. These structures were dug a meter deep into the ground, and their roofs were thatched and waterproofed. The residents also owned livestock such as cows and sheep. They would often bring these animals indoors to keep them warm. They didn't mind if the animals left their excrement on the floor. They actually deliberately spread manure in their homes as a form of underfloor heating. By the late 19th century, the number of tourists visiting St. Kilda increased, and they pushed for the construction of new homes on the island. The modern houses weren't suitable for the island's harsh conditions, though, and started to break down. The locals then returned to their black houses. The island steward soon had the modern houses fixed and improved, and he ordered the residents to live there. He also told them not to let their animals inside. By 1930, the villagers had had enough of being forced into modernization. They also started becoming aware of what life was like outside of their island, and they thought that it was about time to move on. It was a difficult change for the remaining 36 residents, but they still decided to send a request to the British government to be resettled. Number 11. Huge Crisis Buried in the Sand if you've ever been to a popular beach, you've probably seen how crowded it can get. After all the fun activities, you might notice that the once clean and beautiful beach is now littered with all sorts of rubbish, such as cups, bottles, and plastics. This may be a big problem for the people in charge of maintaining the beach, but trash piling up on the shore isn't always caused by the tourists who go there. Sometimes, even waste from faraway cities ends up on the beach. The Cocos Islands are found off the coast of Western Australia and are known for their beautiful beaches. Tourists who opt to stay within the sheltered bays will probably think that the place is a tropical paradise. However, in the lesser known parts of Cocos, it's obvious that the islands have a huge problem. In 2017, a survey estimated that the beaches are littered with 414 million pieces of rubbish that weigh as much as 238 tons. For a place that has a small population of 700 people, that's a whole lot of trash and a massive responsibility. What makes the cleanup harder is that the majority of the rubbish on the beaches is actually buried under 10 centimeters of sand. This means that the items and fragments that people can see on the surface only make up less than one-tenth of the problem. 
With such a Herculean task, the locals will need all the help they can get. Number 10. Amelia Earhart's Bones American pilot Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo over the Atlantic, and she attempted to be the first pilot to fly solo around the world. Unfortunately, in 1937, before she could successfully do so, she vanished while flying over the Pacific Ocean. What happened to her has been a mystery for several decades. Some theorize that Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan ran out of fuel and crashed into the Pacific Ocean before reaching Howland Island. Another theory suggests that the pilots might have survived the crash, but were held captive by Japanese forces. Others say that the two might have made a navigation error, and this resulted in them crashing somewhere near Nikumaroro Island, some 400 miles south of their intended destination. In 1940, a British expedition went to Nikumaroro Island to search for Earhart and Noonan. They found a set of human remains, including a human skull, arm bones, a tibia and fibula, and two femurs. The bones were brought to Fiji, where researchers Dr. D. W. Hoodless inspected and measured them. Ultimately, he determined that the bones belonged to a European male, so this discovery was soon forgotten. However, in 2018, the study was picked up again by the International Group for Historic Aircraft Recovery, and their findings were very different. Using a computer program called Fordisk, they discovered that Dr. Hoodless might have been mistaken. The analysis showed that the bones might actually resemble Earhart's. Their research still has a long way to go, but it's exciting to hear that this mystery may soon be solved. Number 9. Radioactive Capsule by the Roadside The next item found in the middle of nowhere is something you definitely would want to stay away from. Just a few millimeters in size, the object can easily be missed but it was so dangerous that the state emergency authorities called for an intensive search to find this item. It was a tiny radioactive capsule containing cesium-137, a metal commonly used as drilling fluid. In superhero stories, radiation exposure often leads to a person gaining superpowers. Well, that's usually not the case in real life. Because of the radioactive element of cesium, the capsule could cause severe burns to anyone who touched it. It's also explosive in water. The authorities were in a hurry to find it before it caused any damage to people or the environment. The capsule came from a Rio Tinto iron ore mine in northwestern Australia, and it was supposed to be transported to the capital, Perth. But when the package got there, the workers realized that the capsule was missing. It must have fallen off the back of the truck during transport. They alerted the state emergency authorities and immediately started their search for the missing object. After six days, the tiny capsule was found by the roadside along the Great Northern Highway. Number 8. Giant Crystal Death Trap One of the most incredible things found underground is this monstrous cave of giant crystals. The sight is both beautiful and scary, and it's difficult to believe that such a place exists and that all of this was formed by nature. The Nica Mine is the most significant silver, lead, and zinc mine in Mexico. More than 20 years ago, miners from Industrias Peñoles dug a side tunnel intending to install an air conditioning unit in the mine. They were shocked by what they accidentally discovered. It was a cave full of crystals of different shapes and sizes. The Nica Crystal Cave, or La Cueva de los Cristales, looks like a giant death trap. And I'm not exaggerating. Stepping into this cave for too long can be deadly. At 122 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity, the cave is a challenge to explore, and researchers often stayed only for a few minutes at a time because they couldn't stand the heat. It was like working inside a sauna. Currently, the cave and the only tunnel leading to it are inaccessible due to flooding. The good thing is that the crystals actually need water in order to grow. For the past years that they were exposed to air, they had started to deteriorate. Now they have a chance to regrow and remain protected while submerged in water. Number 7. Island of Dolls in Mexico This island is full of creepy dolls, hundreds of them, all hanging from the branches and trunks of trees. This place is what nightmares are made of. Imagine passing by this area in the middle of the night and seeing all of these blank eyes, decapitated heads, and severed limbs. Is something sinister haunting this island? Isla de la Muencas, or the Island of the Dolls, is found just south of Mexico City. A man by the name of Don Julian Santana Barrera once lived there. 
He was the first one on the island to start hanging dolls on trees. Rumor has it that this behavior began when he found a drowned girl in the canal and wasn't able to save her. It's said that he saw a doll floating in the water shortly after the incident. He grabbed the doll and hung it on a tree as an offering to the dead girl, but one doll wasn't enough for him. Over the next 50 years, Don Julian would hang dolls on the hut surrounding the area and nearby trees, which he would collect from the rubbish in the canals. He would hang dolls in various degrees of deterioration, headless, armless, or destroyed in other ways. The condition of the doll did not matter to Don Julian. When tourists started pouring onto the island, they continued the tradition and brought dolls of their own. And to this day, people hang dolls in remembrance of Don Julian and the girl. The mystery still remains whether she was a real person or not. Number 6. Cursed Bridge Built by the Devil There are several impressive bridges found across Europe that are thought to be too wonderful and mystical to be made by human hands. Locals call them the Devil's Bridge because they're believed to be built by the devil himself. One of these spooky monuments, called Ratzkot Bruka, is found in Germany. The bridge is shaped like a semicircle above the water. When viewed together with its reflection, the image of a perfect sphere is formed. The spiky structures at both sides of the bridge look menacing, and it makes you wonder how a person is supposed to cross it. With those sharp and uneven rocks, there's a high chance that whoever tries to cross over will get terribly injured. Perhaps that's why people started thinking this bridge was built by the devil. One scary legend says that an old woman once signed a pact with the devil because she needed to find her lost cow on the other side. The devil agreed to build a bridge for her on the condition that she offers him a human soul. After the bridge was built, the woman tried to trick the devil by sending a dog instead of a human. In his anger, the devil cursed the bridge. Today, crossing the Rakotsbruka is prohibited in order to preserve the monument and for the safety of the visitors. However, locals say that there are rather more sinister reasons why you should stay away from the bridge. They say that whoever crosses it will become cursed. People might even see the horrifying face of the devil or pass through a gateway to another world. Number 5. Inside Fukushima Ghost Towns Fukushima is a city frozen in time, and for most of its former residents, it was a time that they'd rather forget. In 2019, photographer Natalia Sobanska spent two days exploring the abandoned towns near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The buildings and homes have been left untouched for the past eight years, ever since the city's 1,600 residents were forced to evacuate due to a nuclear disaster. What's surprising about the abandoned towns of Fukushima is how intact everything was. Almost everything was left as it was, and this painted a tragic picture of what happened that fateful day when disaster struck the city. This bookstore still had lots of books and magazines inside. While some of them were still on the shelves, most of the books were scattered on the floor. Natalia also stumbled upon an abandoned arcade with several rows of pachinko machines. The place was most likely once crowded with players and surrounded by bright lights and upbeat sounds. This supermarket was also left untouched. The owner probably didn't have the time or resources to bring their merchandise with them. It seems like nobody came to loot the store either. Vehicles that used to be on sale were still there on display outside of a car dealership. Many of them looked like they were still in good condition. After visiting the ghost towns of Fukushima, Natalia's excitement to capture the abandoned buildings quickly turned to sadness upon seeing the depth of tragedy that the former residents must have experienced. Number 4. Abandoned Fishing Hut on a Lake The Bergdes National Park in Germany is a beautiful travel destination filled with breathtaking scenery and picturesque landscapes. In the park, you can take plenty of Instagram-worthy photographs that you can proudly share on social media. Berchtesgarden National Park boasts of having one of the deepest and clearest lakes in all of Germany. You can go on a boat tour to enjoy the beauty of the lake and the surrounding mountain range. Alternatively, if you're not afraid of heights, you can choose to ride on a cable car and have a bird's eye view of the entire park. You can also engage in more adventurous activities, such as hiking or camping on the grounds. Another interesting thing about the park can be found in the mountainous area near the border of Austria. This is the Obersee Lake, a calm and crystal clear body of water. On it sits a lone fishing hut that is shrouded in mystery. Visitors often wonder who built this hut 
and if anyone has ever used it before. Perhaps it's just an art installation and doesn't serve any functional purpose. Or maybe it's used by maintenance staff as a utility shed. What do you think? Number 3. Ancient City Buried Under the Sands of Egypt Archaeologists have made an incredible discovery in Egypt, a lost city that was built more than 3,000 years ago. Dubbed the Lost Golden City, it was unearthed in 2021 near the ancient Egyptian capital of Luxor. It's hailed as the most significant archaeological find since the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb over a century ago. The city was built during the reign of Amenhotep III, who was one of Egypt's most powerful pharaohs. Experts believe that the city was once a bustling hub of activity, home to King Amenhotep III's three royal palaces. The city was abandoned when the pharaoh's successor moved the capital to Amarna. Although the lost city was very well known throughout history, its physical remnants haven't been found until now. After months of excavations, the team of archaeologists found buildings made of stone and sand, which turned out to be a neighborhood that was part of the lost city. The streets were bordered by houses, some of which had walls as high as 10 feet. Many rooms were crammed with trinkets and everyday Egyptian equipment from the 18th dynasty. The team of archaeologists is currently working to uncover more information about the city and they hope that their findings will help rewrite history books and share the truth about the past. Number 2. Secret Nazi Military Base on Alexandra Land During the Second World War, the Nazis had constructed several secret bases all over the world. Some of these military sites have been discovered, while others remain hidden and unknown to the public. In 2017, one of these secret bases was found 1,000 kilometers from the North Pole, 0150. Russian scientists on the island of Alexandraland discovered it. What was the secret military base used for? The base was codenamed Schatzgraber, meaning treasure hunter, and inside it, scientists found ruins of bunkers, well-preserved documents, rusted bullets, and other relics. In case you're wondering, the base wasn't used for human or nuclear experiments. Well, at least that's what the documents say. The Schatzgraber served as a tactical weather station that sent vital meteorological reports, which were used for planning the movement of Nazi troops, ships, and submarines. Because of its name, though, others speculate that the scientists stationed there had another mission, to search for ancient relics. Whatever their objectives were, the scientists eventually needed to abandon the base in 1944 when they got food poisoning from rotten polar bear meat. A German U-boat rescued them so they could get the appropriate treatment. The military base was no longer used after that. And now, it's time for today's topic. This rancher just sent out a chilling message after making this discovery on his private ranch. When he checked on his cattle that morning, he was shocked to find them all dead. He was utterly devastated and didn't know how such a thing could happen. The chilling footage of the seemingly never-ending lines of dead cattle lying on the ground quickly spread across the internet. Many couldn't believe their eyes. How could thousands of cattle just suddenly drop dead at the same time? Some people on the internet claimed that this was a deliberate plot by the government and the elite to sabotage the country's food supply. On the other hand, experts claimed that the sudden deaths were caused by heat stress due to several consecutive days and nights of sweltering temperatures. Cattle may be able to withstand extreme heat during the day, but they need the lower temperatures at night to cool them down. Sadly, several nights prior to the mass bovine deaths, temperatures remained around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which wasn't cold enough for the cattle to recover. What do you think caused the death of so many cattle in one day? Do you believe it was heat stress or something else? As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 1. Fishing Boats in the Middle of the Desert Finding fishing boats resting on barren and desolate land definitely brings a lot of questions to mind. A boat is usually docked near a body of water, not in the middle of the desert. The site also doesn't look like a junkyard, so what are they doing there? The mystery surrounding these boats is actually tied to a tragic history the fall of the once bustling town of Moynak. Can you believe this deserted wasteland used to be the fourth largest inland sea in the world? The boats are not there by accident. The place on which they can be found used to be the shores of the Aral Sea, but now the water is gone and only the sand is left. What could have caused it to disappear like that? As an inland sea, 
Errol got most of its supply of water from the rivers that were connected to it. However, the Soviets diverted the flow of the river to irrigate Uzbekistan's cotton fields. This caused the Aral Sea's water level to recede at an alarming rate. Fish also started dying because the water was getting saltier and more polluted with fertilizers and pesticides. Moynak was a town that relied heavily on the Aral Sea for its fishing industry. They used to have a huge fishing fleet, several active ports, and successful canning centers. Now, only the skeletons of the past can be found at the site. Life is certainly full of surprises, and we just don't know what we might stumble upon along the way. Even the most remote places may be hiding something totally unexpected. Have you ever found something incredible in the middle of nowhere? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.